writer's block. It's a problem that nearly every writer slash filmmaker consistently faces. It is one of the most infuriating things that can happen to a person whose job or hobby revolves around crafting daydreams. As storytellers, we want to write new and exciting tales. We want an audience to have an emotional experience that resembles nothing they have ever felt before. But the trap that many writers, including myself, fall into mainly consists of staring motionless at a blank page. It's not that we don't want to write, or that we don't have the ability to put words down on the page. We just don't have any good ideas. It's not a fun place to be, believe me. Now, if you're watching this and can't relate in any way to what I just said, then you're Shane Black and you can click off of this video. Now that he's gone, let's get to the point. Several months ago, as I was scouring the internet for ideas, I came across this video. I thought it would be really fun to share a game I've played for years that normally I'd keep to myself, but it's always helped me as a writer. This is Max Landis. He's one of the highest paid screenwriters in Hollywood. He is the creative force behind Chronicle, American Ultra, Dirk Gently, and much more. Now, unlike many other artists, Max is very open about his craft. On his Twitter and YouTube accounts, he constantly posts advice and opinions pertaining to screenwriting and storytelling. This particular video, which he uploaded in 2014, I found to be enlightening. In it, he explains a game he calls Flip the Premise, and it's basically exactly what it sounds like. You take a, a movie or a property that already exists, you take all the good guys, you make them the bad guys. You take all the bad guys, you make them the good guys. You rearrange the plot so that it now services to make the bad guys sympathetic, the good guys fucked up and evil, and you have an entirely new story every time. Now, at first, this game might seem pointless. If you flip characters on their head, of course things change, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's changed for the better. Fortunately, as he goes on, the practicality of utilizing this game slash exercise becomes extremely obvious. It's a science fiction movie, okay? Like a fantasy science fiction movie. On this distant planet, there's this guy who's had this really crappy life, and he's brought in to this secret organization of psychics, and it turns out he's this super powerful psychic, right? but his mentor betrays him. In fact, it turns out his mentor is part of this military coup that's trying to instill this evil reign of psychics over the galaxy. The mentor slices this guy to shit, messes him up. He's barely saved by this benign old man who's a master psychic. The master psychic spends years training him and creating a government that will create order and safety throughout the universe. And our guy is all fucked up. And this thing is all he has. His relationship with this old man is really sweet and paternal, but meanwhile, his evil mentor is somewhere out there. And get this, our guy, our hero, he had kids. And the evil mentor has found them. And they're now part of a terrorist organization that is doing strikes all over the universe against this government. This old man who has the kids, he's told the kids that the father is dead and bent them, hell bent them, like on killing this poor guy who didn't do anything. He was betrayed. So it's the story of this guy trying to convince his kids, come back with me, join this government, help me protect the universe. It's just Star Wars, but as soon as you make Darth Vader the good guy, it's a new movie. Simply by switching the perspective, he has made the plight of Darth Vader heroic, heartbreaking, and valiant. Now, this concept is not exclusive to film. You could also do it with a TV show, such as The Walking Dead like this. Negan is the leader of a group of survivors during the zombie apocalypse, and his people are continuously being attacked by a large group of violent serial killers. They routinely slaughter his people as they sleep, and steal everything the group has. Negan eventually captures them, and instead of complete elimination, shows mercy by only fighting their leader. Once he wins the battle, and they understand the error of their ways, he allows the other group to join his people. You could also do it with a book. When Mayla Yule is assaulted by a neighbor's farmhand, Tom Robinson, her father fights tirelessly to prove the man is guilty. As he takes on the hybrid cutthroat lawyer Atticus Finch, his strength is tested. Atticus fatigues the court with hours and hours of questioning and emotional manipulation, but Mayella and Mr. Yule remain 
Valiant. Eventually, in a heartbreaking showcase of emotion, the truth is exposed, the case is won, and justice is served. See what I mean? It works the exact same way regardless of the medium. I've played this game dozens of times, and it frequently pulls me out of whatever creative rut I'm stuck inside of. Although I wouldn't recommend stealing characters' names in copyrighted worlds, it's a great place to start. Once you do the exercise, you can strip the reverse story down to the bare bones and rebuild around them. You'll have a great framework to guide and inspire you, which will free up your brain to focus on the things that make a story truly unique. Once you've done that, writer's block doesn't seem so scary after all. Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking this video out. I really hope you enjoyed it. You can hit me up on Twitter at TheBobbyBurns and Instagram at BobbyBurnsOfficial. If you'd like to help support this show to make more videos like this, the link to my Patreon is down in the description and right on the screen. Max Landis' videos have been a massive inspiration to me over the past few years, so I thought it'd be fun to give some credit where credit is due. Again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you later.